Hey, hello, small crew. There's uh, two people online, and we've got uh, some people here. Bodies. Hello. Female coders. Female coders to be. So, um, yeah, this is my meetup group. So, thanks for joining. We're going to be talking about uh, JavaScript and lightweight reactive framework. So, uh, half of the people on this talk don't really know what that means, but we're about to. <laughs> you will know Maybe. soon. And then, I guess, um, I know Pete already, but um, the other guy there, sorry, I can't pronounce your name, Ayub. Did, have you used um, Vue or Svelte before? And what what sort of background do you have in JavaScript? If you if you want to answer, you don't have to. <laughs> oh, actually, yeah, you can hear me, can't you, Pete? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Okay, all right. So I'm just gonna assume that. Um, You've got a little bit of coding background. All right, cool. Okay, cool, nice. So um, I only got introduced to Svelte um, about four weeks ago, and yeah, it's really great. I, um, no worries, his mic's broken. Um, uh, yeah, I. so I'm pretty new to it. So I don't know any, everything. You probably know way more than me, but I just love the concept, so I wanted to share it. Um, so I just got to do a couple of shout outs. So we're at a cafe called Kipaloo in Surrey Hills. And uh, thanks to Quinn, I was uh, just chatting while I get my daily coffee here and told him I did this talk and wondered if I could do it here rather than from my bedroom, which is what I've been doing, which is a bit depressing. <laughs> But um, yeah, since COVID, I've sort of started this group and it's all about creative development, creative technology, and basically the projects that I work on. Um, and so if you come to the cafe, there's $100 on the bar and you can get drinks and some food. Um, plus you'll get to meet people and you'll be in person and I'll get to meet you. So um, hopefully we can, um, yeah, we can do that next time. So uh, what else are we going to do? Oh yeah, so I run a little company called Enigma and um, I guess I sponsor this talk as well. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so um, yeah, and, I, and I, um, I've been back in Australia for 12, no, 18 months now. I don't know how long it's been. 18 months. Yeah. 18 months. And yeah, doing creative technology under this company called Enigma. So um, yeah, so today's talk is going to be on uh, JavaScript and what lightweight reactive frameworks means and a couple of the options. So we're going to spend, probably the talk will probably go for about half an hour, maybe a bit quicker. Um, and then just if you have any questions, just shout out. And it's going to be structured. There's a bit of history at the front and then um, it gets into the nitty gritty and uh, has some demos and sort of breakdown and the pros and cons of each of the the platforms view and svelte. So I'll start now. I'll have to go over here, don't I? So there's my contact details. Uh, I'll share this video and the slides after this on the meetup group. And um, if you're not already on the meetup group, it's just Creative Tech Now, and you can join there. And then that's how I'll share the slides and the videos and stuff like that. So a brief history of the web. I'm sure you all know the web, but maybe you don't know where it came from or you know the background of it. So um, it started in the 60s, which is ages ago. <laughs> and it started with the ARPANET, which came out of like a military research and university research. And they were just trying to find a way of doing um, sort of ex uh, transfer of data and files and messaging. Um, and Tim uh, Berners-Lee was the inventor of the World Wide Web. He created the coding in HTML. 
Um, he came up with uh, emails and uh, web browser, the first web browser, Netscape, uh, came off the back of that. And then in around 1995, we had JavaScript, which is, you know, was a pinnacle moment. And then that sort of allowed HTML, which was just basically text and images uh, with uh, links. So actually, yeah, so the concept of HTML was to be able to link these pages together, which was, you know, the beauty of it. You could have a dynamic page, non-linear. Um, you know, where if you look at the history of media, you had like films and, and books and everything, uh, you know, television and radio where it was linear there and it was continuous, but um, HTML was non-linear. So, um, you know, it opened a whole world of different uh, storytelling, I guess. Um, and so JavaScript added uh, different capabilities and, and functionality to that and made it um, more impressive so you could do more things. And then CSS came along, which is cascading style sheets, and that allows you to style and design the way a page looks. Until then, the page just looked um, pretty ugly and you couldn't do too much with it. Uh, so it allowed you to do like gradients and transparency and um, transitions and animation and stuff like that. So you could do animation as well with um, JavaScript. I've just got to admit someone to the group. One sec. Uh, hello, welcome. You've only missed... Uh, 60 years of history. <laughs> Thanks for joining. Um, so yeah, well, in the in the late 90s, we had Google, GeoCities, and AOL. All of those goodies that I don't know if you remember them. Do you remember GeoCities? You could make your own uh, web page on GeoCities.com, and it was hard to make it look good. But some some people did some amazing pieces on there. Um, we also had the news feed and chat system, MSN and Yahoo. And then Ajax came along, which is, um, actually, I don't know what the acronym is, asynchronous JavaScript, something else. <laughs> um, but basically, it allowed you to do uh, what is now the equivalent of a promise. So you could start, uh, you could run multiple functions at once. And so it made made the functionality of a website much more complicated or, um, yeah, advanced. So then we had LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, and all the sort of uh, social media platforms started there, uh, Twitter. And then at the same time, we had eBay and Amazon start. And uh, so they've pretty much, uh, they've changed what they are, what they represent, but they still have the core functionality so eBay was like an online auction site and Amazon is obviously um, an e-commerce site but it's so much more than that they were the first companies to sort of diversify and they offered more than just um, the online shopping which started as books they just used to sell books and then they diversified into other products and then they made people be store owners and um, yeah, now they offer like their cloud services. So, um, yeah, that was a really sort of important part of uh, internet history. And then we had Apple release the first smartphone, the iPhone 1, and their browser, Safari, which allowed you to see websites on the go and uh, which opened a, a whole new world to web, which became responsive web and web 2.0 and we started talking about user experience or UX design and um, around that time maybe a little bit earlier we had WordPress and uh, Drupal and then Node.js started which um, I'm sure everyone online knows that that is like a core tech to behind a lot of the frameworks that we use today and, and modern JavaScript and how we work. Um, at least on the front end. Um, there's many other options on the back end. Um, 
and yeah, and then now what we have is uh, reactive online um, applications. So um, the, these examples aren't reactive um, websites, but they have the concept of um, you know the same sort of concept as reactive. So TikTok, um, Instagram, WeChat, Snapchat, the you've got AR and VR hidden behind there as well. So what these mean, um, you know, is kind of, they embody what reactive um, experiences are in real time. Oops, we're over here. So and now I'm going to get, so that was a brief history of the web. Now I want to give you a brief history of digital art and design. So the concept of, um, I guess, what the internet is and the World Wide Web is um, has been around for a long time and I think you probably all know of the book Neuromancer and the author Philip K. Dick who did do Android's Dream of Electric Sheep um, which is Blade Runner, the film. So if you've seen Blade Runner then you know what I'm talking about. So the concept of cyberspace came out of Neuromancer and um, yeah and, and sort of like all these sci-fi concepts have been around since the 60s and probably even earlier. Um, uh, so it's not a new thing, it's only sort of like that society is caught up with science fiction, which happens a lot. Um, so, and then in terms of art, there were a lot of different artists exploring non-linear storytelling and media. So we have uh, John Cage is a experimental um, musician or sound artist. Um, I think he his most famous performance was he went up onto stage and he sat in front of the um, piano and didn't touch a key for an hour and then he just left. So it was like complete the first kind of performance and non-linear experience in terms of uh, sound art. And Yoko Ono has sort of similar sort of background exploring these unusual alternative concepts of storytelling. And Namjud Pike, who was one of the first artists to sort of play with magnets and television and electronics and uh, installations. So that was all through the 70s. In the 80s, video games sort of exploded and we had the Apple Mac. Both of those things enabled people to create their own stories and create their own sort of experiences and video games you could get lost in a non-linear experience and world and um, the Mac you could do painting, you could write a book, you could um, browse the internet at that point, could you? No. Not quite. <laughs> Not yet. Um, and then in the 90s we had the artists like Damon Hirst come onto the scene um, Flash actually started in the 90s, um, which I know Pete and I have a big background in. And um, yeah, then we had indie, indie games starting because of that. And also the Unreal Engine started. So we had artists using Unreal uh, to create experiences. We had .NET, uh, sorry, net.art happened in 2000s which is still an email list you can subscribe to and it's um, just conversations from artists about various different topics. Um, oh no, the TV's going to go off. Um, or the remote. Where you can put the volume. It's in here. Hold that thought. Okay. Yay! Um, that's why I turned off the energy saver. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, and then we had Michael Snow, who is a Canadian artist who does these. Uh, he used to do CD ROMs, and you buy the CD ROM, and it's a really cool sort of art piece that he creates and uh, produces himself. Uh, similar to David Lynch, uh, Michael Snow and David Lynch have similar sort of approach to their art. They do. Um, they're called auteurs, they do everything from the ideas through to writing it, to starring in it, publishing it, um, creating it, like everything, promoting it. Um, so, and then the, I kind of uh, idolize them and I do, I try and do the same sort of thing, I try and be across every part of a project, 
at least in my own personal projects. Um, I want to do the sound, I want to do the video, I want to do the animation, um, unless it's a big project and then I get other people to help. <laughs> um, and then at the same time in 2000 we had Matrix. Um, 2005, Google Maps happened, Unity, the game engine appeared, which were both uh, very sort of uh, pinnacle moments again. Then in 2009, we had uh, Dateo Manabe, who I just want to show you his work. It's quite, I'll go click here, don't I? I don't know if you guys can see it. Pete, can you see that? Oh, okay. All right. Um, search that guy because he's actually. I'll just share the link in the. How do I do that? Yeah, I'll share it in the chat because he is uh, interesting. So he takes um, electrodes and then sticks them on his face and then he also has sensors on another guy's face um, and they transfer their emotions. So if someone smiles, it, the sensors pick up the smile and then makes the other person smile but by electrocuting them <laughs> with, small, with small pulses. So um, yeah. <laughs> The 2000s, there were a lot of these sort of weird interfaces and like um, there were so many different artists doing different things like trying to push the boundaries of what they think, uh, you know, the future is and what storytelling is. And speaking of t storytelling, you could do a story now on Instagram in 2010 when that was released um, and that was a massive sort of moment as well we could um, bring like publishing and photography to the masses and at first it started off where it was just for photographers or um, you know image enthusiasts and then it sort of became popular and now everyone is on it and I guess that's sort of turned into what became like uh, snapchat and tiktok so, and then now what we have is, these are just some of the artists that I like that are working in the digital space. Um, so Team Lab, they do some amazing digital installations. If you haven't heard of them, I say look them up. Um, Rafik and Doll does a lot of like immersive environments. And Banksy, I think we all know. He's not a digital artist as such, but um, he always involves, well, not always, he often involves like... Um, so he comments on society and digital society is the digital is a huge part of society now so it's sort of yeah given that he fits here um, I can do this all right so now to the core of the talk so a brief history of JavaScript so this is just about this is just going to talk about the evolution um, oh yeah, on the right there you have an image of eBay when it first was released. Um, so you can kind of see how they were probably one of the best design sites at the time. I remember that. Yeah, it was so cool. Like you could go in there and look up like tin trucks and stuff. And, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, but it just was really raw. So... HTML, when it first came out, it was clean, simple, limited. There wasn't much design at all. You couldn't style stuff. You could have blue links that weren't visited. If you visited them, they turned purple. And that was kind of it. You could drop images in. Um, you could put borders, I think, drop shadows maybe, um, bevel the edges and stuff like that. Um, you could have tables. But it just was simple but no design. Then JavaScript came along and it made it a little bit um, less limited. You could do more stuff, more interaction, more functionality, but it was still simple, but there wasn't design. Then CSS came along and we had, um, you know, basically you could make the site look good. You had design and it became even less limited. You could do more features with that. You could even transition. 
then what we had was Web 1.0, which um, was it, what my view of it was that although it was rich and you could do design, it ended up being quite messy in terms of what the code was like when you had to do a project in uh, pure JavaScript um, with HTML and CSS. So uh, there was uh, a sort of push to make this more manageable and cleaner and then jQuery came along and that was basically a library that allowed you to organize your project in a better way for programmers. Um, and, and then we had Web 2.0 which um, allowed you to do cleaner, kind of complex, rich designed websites. After that we had Angular which appeared from Google. They came up with um, a way of organizing code in a what we are calling reactive um, manner. So you could have um, a sort of responsive websites that were built in a, a managed way so you could organize all your files properly rather than just having one big long file that was really ugly to look at. And then Facebook released React, which React was, um, it's their back end or their engine that they used to organize their project. And I guess they were the first to sort of coin the idea or the term, or solidify the term of a reactive website. And then, um, and, and they were, it was clean, simple, rich, designed, and it was organized as the main thing. Then Vue came out. Uh, recently, I don't know how long ago, a couple years I think, two years, and it was great because it uh, made it lightweight, so it kept the reactiveness um, that um, Angular and React have, but because Angular is from Google and React is from Facebook, they're huge companies and they have like these huge libraries, so it takes a lot of overhead and investment to set up a project that uses them. And Vue gets rid of all of that. It just keeps it super simple. You can only, rather than having to use that whole platform or framework for the website, you could just put a little bit, like maybe just the banner or the buttons or the menu, and the rest of it could be, you know, native JavaScript or, you know, whatever you want to use. And then, and it was clean, simple, rich. It had design and it was organized and it was also fast. Then Svelte came along, which is only last year that it started, so it's pretty new. And what it does is everything that Vue does, except it does it faster because it, um, just because of the technology it uses, it's not a compile, it's compiled at build time rather than run time. Do you know what that means? No. <laughs> It basically, like when you're coding, um, you, you build this website and it has to get turned into, you're using like a, basically a pattern and then that pattern has to get turned and that's nothing like what the end product is. Mm. So that pattern has to get turned into the end product, like go through a machine to process and then spat out. Um, that, so that process can be done in one or two ways. You can either do it in the browser in like at runtime when it's running, or you could do it before you publish it at build time. And if you do it before you publish it, then there's no calculations that have to happen in the browser. It happens like um, it, yeah, it happens instantly. It runs. Uh, the calculations happen when you're building it on your computer before you publish it, rather than happening in uh, the browser. So that's what makes it Svelte fast. View is faster than some of these, but it's not as fast as Svelte. So here's a diagram, love a good graph, showing the sort of popularity and the interest of, of all the major um, patterns, I guess, and frameworks in JavaScript. So React had sort of led the way for a long time, then Vue took over. This is in terms of interest. Um, there's a link here that I'll share with you guys later that uh, shows the, the different values based on satisfaction and awareness. 
so which changes. But I think interest is the probably the the most relevant um, because it's so new. So Svelte has the most interest, um, and yeah, and then it goes down. You've got Vue.js, Angular, um, actually Preact, which I haven't used, Angular, and then Ember. I, I'm just going to skip over this because we've done a lot of history. <laughs> if you're interested, there's a slide about the history of web development, which goes into detail behind the technologies used. So what is reactive JS? We touched on it, but here's a diagram to show you what it is. Sorry, here's a GIF to show you. Um, a word is a, a picture is a thousand words, and a GIF is a million. I just made that. <laughs> um, so <laughs> what you've got here is user interface that it reacts straight away so when you click something you're kind of expecting something to happen so there's some like uh, cases where you click something and then there's a delay before something happens um, and in that case you don't have like the user feedback which we're sort of craving now because we're used to using um, uh, mobile apps and mobile apps are so much faster than we well, used to be so much faster than websites websites would have um, you know a, sh a short delay and the way they achieve that is that they load the whole page so that when I'm talking about um, whether you do it at build time or runtime that gets loaded that build that product gets loaded into the page and then every feature is available like straight away so it's really reactive Um, so the, the features of reactive JavaScript is you have a reactive user interface which we just sort of saw um, and we have instant actions performance like a mobile app and there was a definite need for parts of the page to update with that whole page reloading which was an issue and Ajax sort of started this and allowed you to do more than one um, function at the same time and then some other bits of technology which sort of led to where we are today and being handlebars and moustache which is some uh, technology or a pattern that allows you to inject values into a page and node which we mentioned before is sort of pinnacle to all of these technologies here uh, grunt, gulp, webpack, parcel and roll up and they're all ways of um, uh, automating the build process. So Vue.js, how long have we been going? 30 minutes, okay. So Vue.js is an open source MVVM, so model view, view model pattern. Um, it's component based, reactive, and it's a library. So it's not a framework, rather than like Angular and React are frameworks. Um, Java, uh, sorry, Vue.js is a library or pattern, uh, so it's kind of like a recommended approach. You don't have; it's not as rigid as a framework. If you get a framework, like imagine a house, you put up the framework, the walls have to go where the framework is. Whereas a pattern is more like a suggestion, like a blueprint to how you should build it, and you know you could kind of move that around a bit and modify it. Um, it's single page applications and why view so this is a good question you kind of have to when you're um, you have to answer this when you're deciding on technology and one of the main reasons that you use view is because it's lightweight and so today's talk is all about lightweight reactive frameworks and uh, the main difference between the lightweight and sort of heavyweight is whether um, you can, uh, I guess it's the investment and the overhead involved in setting up a project and building it. So Vue.js is quite uh, light, as in you don't need to invest too much, it doesn't take too much to load and um, it makes it fast compared to Angular and, uh, and React. And obviously it's reactive, there's uh, good support online, so good community and uh, Discord channel. Um, sorry, not Discord. Discord channel. There's Slack. There's um, 
uh, even their website, you can reach out to them and GitHub. So, and, and it's really popular and has a progressive, uh, it, it's quite common in progressive development studios. Uh, the other main thing about it is obviously it's clean and organized because you're using components. So some of the features are it uses a virtual DOM. So the DOM is a display object model. It's basically the elements on the page that you see. And a virtual means that um, it's not using the actual display elements. It's creating its own version which updates the actual ones. So that's why there's a little bit of a delay, but uh, it's a great concept because um, it allows you allows them to build the whole site before uh, displaying it. So they choose what to show and what not to show. Um, it has data binding components. Um, it's got event handling. All of these features are quite important. I think the. Um, main difference between this and Angular and React is uh, yeah, mainly the lightweight and the virtual DOM. Yeah, that's the main difference. The view CLI is quite powerful as well. Um, so why, why wouldn't you choose Vue? Um, you, the main reason people don't choose it is because they already have a project that's built in Angular and React and um, you may not want to choose it if you have to do a lot of animation because the animation can slow down the project. Um, they have built-in transitions and stuff uh, and you can use JavaScript and CSS transitions to do a lot of animation but that all adds to the performance and can slow down the site. Um, again, it depends what you're building. A lot of the stuff that I built in the past in Vue has been run on a desktop, so it, because it's not online, it doesn't have to have performance. Uh, it doesn't have to have amazing performance. But um, if you are doing websites, Vue can be. If you're using a lot of animation, can be a bit slow. So here's a little demo of. Vue.js. I won't go into this, you guys can have a look, um, but this shows you how much is involved in a basic um, example. Another example here, so you have up the top the HTML and these are, so you've got a property here called the message which um, is part of the JavaScript here. Its default value is hello view and then if you edit the input here by typing in the window you can change it to say whatever and it is really fast and I'll just show the guys. So you can um, see this on their website and I know the guys you can't see this but um, online but yeah I'm just going to show you so you can see how quick it is, impressive. <laughs> I'm just showing them. <laughs> Hi team. Hi team. Uh, okay, cool. I'll jump back on. So remember how fast that was? Yes. We're going to see in a minute how, how Svelte compares to that. So, any questions about Vue? Any you guys got any questions online? Just throw them out if you do. I need a drink. Okay, so Svelte. Um, I think Svelte is amazing. It's really interesting the approach that they've done. I mean, it's not a new approach, but um, it's good because they've solved the problem that is pretty common with a lot of developers and I think creative developers because we use a lot of animation, which slows down your page a lot, transitions and whatnot. So Svelte is... Um, 
it's very similar to Vue, but it's the the developer of Svelte is calling um, Svelte a language rather than a pattern. Oh, sorry, rather than a framework. Um, so it's it's basically a bunch of syntax that you use to create your website. So you 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 write this site in a particular way. You write you use JavaScript and HTML in their own format, in their own syntax, and you create uh, object oriented components using their specific design pattern. Um, and so it's fast, it's light, it's highly optimized and it's efficient. And that's because it's a compiler, not a framework. So that, as I mentioned earlier, it basically just means that it doesn't create extra code and junk that uh, bloats the site, it keeps it nice and light. It, because um, Angular and React have like this huge um, library, like if you're, if you're using um, those two frameworks, you have to bundle the page with that library so it knows how to turn that language into that particular page and that build and build at runtime. So it has to have this thing to rely on uh, this library to uh, to reference and then create the site. So you don't have to add extra code, no extra library. It doesn't transpile, uh, trans compile. It compiles at build time, not runtime. And basically, your output is vanilla JavaScript. That's just plain boring old JavaScript. <laughs> So Svelte features are, there's no virtual DOM, so unlike uh, Vue, there's no virtual DOM, it's the actual DOM. Uh, it's just straight JavaScript. You also have, you have two-way data binding. Um, you have components. Uh, the state management is, oh, that's spelled wrong. I don't know what a management is, but <laughs> I think I meant management. Easy state management. Uh, animations and transitions, yay. And it is truly reactive in terms of the properties and the values you're sending around. Styles are scoped, which Vue does as well. Um, it's lightweight, it has a CLI, and the startup script is really simple. So why would you choose it? Um, because it's a lightweight option for building websites. But you can also make it a heavyweight um, option too. You can you can build it up. It won't have some of the advantages that Angular and uh, React have because they're designed to be heavyweight options. Um, but yeah, so that's the sort of trade-off you you have there. Uh, it's reactive, well supported, constantly growing, and then it's popular again against like new studios. Um, it's good with animation, transitions, and performance. So why wouldn't you choose it? Again, you wouldn't choose it if you had like legacy code in other frameworks. Um, TypeScript isn't fully supported. Sorry, Pete, I know you're a TypeScript fan. <laughs> we, we're using TypeScript at the moment. We're having some issues with it. You can get around them. Um, there's just, um, yeah, it's just some small barriers there. It will still work, but you just have to work around them. Uh, Vue.js supports TypeScript, and uh, I think React and Angular does as well. And there's no routing included in by default. You just use the hash um, links. Uh, so here's an example. See how much less code there is? Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice and clean, yeah, very spelt. So, um, yeah, actually the word spelt, do you know what that means? Yeah, spelt. It's slim. And, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I didn't know until I got this. Uh, cool. Yeah, it's good. And so, yeah, this is just a really simple demo anyway, so there's not much involved there, but all, all you have is um, JavaScript at the top, which is just defining a variable. Um, actually an HTML string and you can inject that using the at symbol in curly braces within um, your HTML which is the bottom and then your output is this. Um, 
and here's another example. So it's the same example that we had before or similar. You click on the button and then it updates straight away. And I can show the guys that. So here, see how fast it is. <laughs> um, it's probably not a good example of how fast. There's some examples here, so this one. Mm. So on their website, they have some really good examples that you can get into and see the um, the way it's built and how how it reacts. And this is a good one for the animation. Shows you how smooth it is. And yeah, so that's a little example of a, um, oh, so which one do you choose? Uh, in conclusion, I think it depends on the project. There's, um, if you need it to be performant and you don't writing, you don't like writing lots of code but are okay with a project that is quite new and there's a few nuances, then Svelte is an option. Um, the only reason I'd sort of choose Vue is if animation isn't really, uh, doesn't have a big um, impact on the site uh, because it all sort of it performs a little bit slower. Uh, both of them are light and easy and robust. So yeah, it just depends on the project. And I'm not saying that like the other ones like uh, Angular and React aren't options either. It just depends what project suits, uh, sorry, what solutions suits what project. So I've got a bunch of links in here which I can share with you guys as well. But uh, this one was really funny, the truth about Svelte, where the guy who developed it didn't realize what he was doing when he first started. And he's like... It's basically a confession about that, so it's pretty funny. Um, and then, yeah, it's just some other links in there as well. So, yeah, thanks. Thanks, Reese. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks, Mikkel. How are you? Pretty good. Just uh, going through the project at the same time, to be honest. So, yeah. yeah. Have you used Felt before? Nah. But it looks pretty clean. Yeah, it's um, there's. I think their website is actually just all you need. They they've got everything that you need in there, and you just basically search it, and yeah, it's quite good. Um, I'm loving it. It's got some neat things in there, and uh, some of the other guys in our team are really good at it. Um, Jan, who's in Canada, he, he some of the stuff he does in there is pretty amazing, and He's been using it for a while, so that's really good. Um, yeah, nice, if, nice. If you need to know anything, just reach out to him. Don't reach out to me because I don't know it well enough yet. Um, yeah, carry on. I mean, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll be, I'll be uh, probably trying things myself first. And, uh, yeah, uh, best, so best way to learn. <laughs> yeah. Cool. What do you think, yeah. Pete? Are you in? <laughs> Sorry, what was that? Uh, Pete. Did you? Are you gonna try Svelte? That uh, looks interesting. Um, uh, yeah, I have to. I'll have to have a look at some more code examples. I mean, it looks it looks incredibly simple, like too simple. Yeah. I, mean, I couldn't really. Follow, <laughs> yeah. I couldn't follow that, like, how, how does it do that? Yeah. It for me, like when I first started, I had the same issue. I'm like, but where is all the code? Like, what? Why? <laughs> Why is it so simple? And um, yeah, like even just importing things, all you have to do is like add the package and then just import it. There's yeah. you don't have to make sure it's in the right folder and all this sort of stuff. And yeah, it was it's just really easy to use. Um, but yeah, I might do a more detailed one where you get to see how a project sort of set up because then that's kind of 
and like especially a sort of creative project because then you get a sense of what's involved in terms of um yeah trying to get it to look good because obviously those examples are pretty not not very um visual and there's no sort of animation or anything so all those points i was trying to make you couldn't really see them um yeah so that's cool that probably won't be the next one but it might be soon all righty uh, any other questions? Any questions from here? The cafe? What about cost? Is there any oh, yeah. Whoa. Yeah, Whoa. well, in, uh, it is a good question. I think, um, that... Email it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I think because the, the main point that Svelte has is that, um, you're writing less code. So less code means less time. But if you're... No, it means it's cheaper because you're not working as much on it. So, but um, a lot of the people who are using other frameworks like Angular, React, they've been using it for years and they've got like a library of stuff they can use. Yeah. So, whereas this one you're starting from scratch. So, if you if you discount the fact that um, people might already have stuff that they can reuse, repurpose, then um, Svelte is quicker to develop as well. Um, yeah, there's just a lot of really nice, neat little shortcuts that they've kind of thought of that help you cut down on uh, the amount of code that you have to write. Um, but then if you're... Sometimes when you're writing a project in a language that's not very common, then it becomes hard to find talent and then the cost goes up. So because you kind of become a specialist um and then yeah whereas if you do a really common language like react or angular then that's quite popular and uh, you can really easily find someone cheap to work on it depending on the skills yeah good question you can collect your drink <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think it, it depends on the project. What do you prefer? Uh, for, I, I wish I knew a little bit more about Svelte because I'm just learning it. Um, but I think if I knew as much about Svelte as I do about Vue, I'd probably choose Svelte because, um, yeah, it's just faster. It's, it's just Svelte. It's just Svelte. I'm team Svelte all the way. It's it's team slim. Svelte, yeah. The, but the only reason you wouldn't, choose it I think uh, is if there's something particular in view that you like yeah. so there's some features that yeah that it doesn't have um, but if you need that like routing if you need routing view is a bit better like you can that Svelte does have routing but um, yeah there's issues with it it's not supported and, and TypeScript have you ever been in a situation where you just wish you could use both or in like you can actually Wow. Yeah, that's the beauty of these ones. So if you're using React and Angular, you're kind of locked into them. They can't really talk to each other. But if you're using Spelt, you can, um, yeah. Borrow bits from. Yeah, you can load both of them in. And do you think that's the future where, like, all these languages can start talking to each other? Because before mm. it was very separate because people tried to. Well, yeah, in the end it is just JavaScript, so it can speak to each other but I think um, yeah I have to look at that a bit more but so on the um, Airbnb website they just use they use like JavaScript and then they use Vue uh, for just like their calendar or something like that and then so they only use it where they need to do some some kind of where they need that um, feature to support that yeah so it, it's not always, you don't have to build the whole site in Vue or Spell. You can just do a little bit. Whereas if you do something in React or Angular, you have to build the whole site in that. Yeah. Hmm. Good question. <laughs> We're very engaged Yeah. That's a good test. Oh, we have another question. Do you think uh, Spell is effective for complex projects? Yeah, so we're working on a pretty complex project now. Mikel and I, and um, 
it's it's getting pretty big and we've had issues that um, I think you probably have in all big projects <laughs> to do with like how to structure it and um, I think it is still effective there's some advantages of using react over um, view or svelte when you want to do big complex projects and angular especially angular is probably the best for big projects um, and that's just because that was that is what it's designed for so if you get the uh, compile if you get some of the templates or the CLI and you build basically the default project is designed to be a robust complex massive website uh, whereas Svelte is completely the opposite. It's meant to be a really light, lightweight project. Um, but that's not saying that you can't make complex projects, can't, play, can't make heavyweight um, complex projects with Svelte. Uh, it just takes a little bit more groundwork to do that. And there are a lot of templates out there and seed projects that you can use to... to to do that, but um, yeah, it's it's not really designed for that straight away. Um, it just takes more work. <laughs> Hope that answers the question. All right. So if no one has any more questions, I'm gonna close the talk. And thank you all for coming. And thanks, Quinn, again for the venue. <laughs> thanks. Guys. Cool. I hope to see you guys next time. You can When's come the in. Next talk. Next talk. The talk is every last Tuesday of the month. So I don't know when the next one is in terms of the date, but it's Tuesday. In November. <laughs> in November. No. October. October. And November. Yeah. And November. Yeah. Right. Cool. All right. Thanks, guys. See you later. Bye. Bye, streamers. Bye. See you, streamers. <laughs> 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 live, live streamers.